fight reactions. What is this big green structure that we see here? Thylakoid. So this is a thylakoid. In what structure will you find the thylakoid? I heard one person say it. So where would you find this thylakoid? In the cell, but it's like in the cell, there's a structure in which the thylakoid is in. Going back to the basic cell biology. So if you look at this picture right here, you'll see that we're in what organelle? So you want to help her, Billy? It's in the chloroplast. So if you look at this picture, these are stacks of thylakoids. This is the chloroplast membrane. You said chloroplast, right? So chloroplast membrane, we're in the thylakoid here. So this is one draw, uh, enlarged picture, right? I've been drawing the thylakoid like this, right? This is a thylakoid. That makes this structure a what? Chloroplast. So if you look at this picture, what we're looking at is one small square of that thylakoid membrane. Does everybody understand that? So that one boxed in region is in fact this thing that we're looking at right here, which makes all this white what? The white space surrounding the thylakoid. What does that make it? Stroma, right? So all of this is stroma, and in this picture, all of this would be stroma. Okay? It's sort of remarkable that we're just going to hang out in this one piece of membrane here. Right? I picked that edge there because it, similarly it, it also curves. Right? So we're looking at the curve um, of this membrane right here. Right? So it's a thylakoid membrane. Now what proteins do we have embedded in that membrane that will perform the reactions of the light reactions, the series of steps? What's that first protein that you run into in the light reactions? So I've posted a quiz for you. I'm probably going to post the date of the test. We're going to do a lab before the test, so there's some time to review. But if in your mind you're not clicking on this, you better go back to the screencast and watch with the guiding questions in hand. So what is this first protein? Nick? Yeah, it's a photosystem. And so I've gone out of my way so far to say photosystem 2, the blank photosystem in the pathway. What's that blank mean? The first. Why, why do I have to make that distinction? There's an annoying sort of reason for it in biology. Really? Photosystem 2 is the first photosystem in the pathway because photosystem 1 over here was the first one to be discovered. So they were discovered out of sequence. So I will always say photosystem 2, the first photosystem in the pathway, it passes all la la la. And then eventually the second photosystem in the pathway, photosystem 1, receives electrons. So you got to keep that um, together. So what is the source of all electrons necessary for photosynthesis? Going back to that overall equation on the board, CO2 plus water plus light yields oxygen and glucose. What's your source of electrons? Somebody other than Nick. Yeah. Joshua. Water. So look, in this diagram, you see what feeding into photosystem two? Electrons coming from water. Okay? You also see what left over as a byproduct? Oxygen. So if you look to the left of the board, CO2 plus water plus light yields oxygen and glucose. You've now explained water, its role. You've also explained 
oxygen, how it's produced. Fair enough? Once you extract the electrons from hydrogen, you get H pluses left over. There seem to be a lot inside the, the uh, thylakoid space. Is that true? Okay, we'll come back to that because that's important, right? Now, looking at photosystem two again, what is the role of light? Should I go around and just ask people in a row or should there be hands raised? Yeah, Alexis. Say it one more time, I'm sorry. Energy. Energy, so it's going to energize what? Billy? So it energizes photosystems, but specifically, what component of that photosystem? Um, yeah. Pigments. Pigments, good. So photosystems are special because they're proteins that have pigments in them. What's the most abundant pigment we see in most autotrophs, most photosynthesizers? Cole? Which one? So green pigment, sure, but it's called chlorophyll. Right, so chlorophyll is the most abundant pigment. And you're right to say green because it absorbs all wavelengths except green. Instead, it does what with green? Reflects it, which bounces those wavelengths into your eye and creates this image of green. Okay? Good. So the chlorophyll gets excited. And to visualize that, we have this picture here where when light comes in, it gets excited, 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 and then what happens when this special pair here? What is this showing you? Say it again, louder. Electron transfer. So here we're, we're dealing with the wave at a stadium, right? Energized, energized, until this guy gets energized and he gives the electrons up. Okay, which creates a deficit that we fill with electrons from what? Water, good. Okay, so that's the role of photosystem two. Now, if you look at this picture from, lost my pen, here we go. From here to here, what do we call that region, that, that, uh, those few proteins? Yeah, it's actually labeled up there. We call it the electron transport chain or the ETC for short. So the ETC spans from photosystem two to photosystem one. Yeah? What is its job? Think about what it's named, Matthew. It transports electrons. So it's that bridge for electrons between photosystem two and photosystem one. Anybody remember the story of the electrons as they pass over the ETC, Cole? Good. So here, they start off as high energy and they go all the way down and they're transferred to photosystem one. By the time they get there, they're low energy. Can everybody see that from that diagram? They start as high energy and they end up as low energy. When you start the school day, you probably have more energy than you do at the end of the day, right? When you start practice, you probably have more energy than at the end of practice, is that true? Now why is that the case? because you're using the energy, right? In school, you're using the energy to think. You're using the energy to pass from one class to the other. Maybe you're getting up and doing some sort of activity. Uh, on the soccer field, you're running across the field, you're kicking a ball, and you're using energy. Same thing is happening in the thylakoid membrane for the light reactions. Okay, the energy is being used for something. Does anybody remember what that something is, Joshua? Great, so active transport, we're gonna leave diffusion to the side for a moment because it's more of a passive process. 
you look to the right of the board up there, you'll see passive versus active transport. Mary Kai, this is one of those things from the past that we studied, which we'll catch you up to speed with in 30 seconds. Okay, so passive. Passive transport is when you go from high to low. That's concentration. But we said we were going to talk about what type of transport? Active. So active is when you're bringing things in from low to high. Right? So we said active transport, low to high, and it requires energy, right? So again, taking a look at this picture, the concentration of H pluses is low in the stroma, but it's high where? Inside the thylakoid, right? So we're going to move from here to here. We're going to go from low H plus to high H plus. That's active transport, right? Low to high. So we need energy to do that. What energy should we use? Your first choice might be to say what? ATP, but what are we trying to make in this process? ATP, so let's use an alternative resource. Matthew? Yeah, so it turns out the electrons that are passing over the ETC are an excellent source of energy, and that's why they're low energy when they get to photosystem one, the second photosystem in the pathway, because their energy has been used to bring them from out here in the stroma to inside the thylakoid, okay? Active transport, low to high, requires electron energy. Any questions on that? It is 100% on both your quiz and your test. So if you want basically about 20 to 25 points, on both of those assessments, you will realize that we're doing active transport right there. Fair enough? Okay. Now, we've established a high concentration inside. I also taught you about passive transport. How does passive transport work? High to low, right? So we just did active transport. going into the thylakoid, now we're going to use passive going where? Out of the thylakoid, right? So we've established this high concentration gradient inside. Now we just need a passage for those H pluses to get out. Now, photosystem 2 is not a transport protein. The ETC does have transport proteins, but which way are they flowing? They're flowing into the thylakoid, so we can't go against that stream. Uh, photosystem 2, not a transport protein. So that leaves us with who? ATP synthase. So ATP synthase is going to be your outlet for H pluses to flow through. So it's clearly a transport protein, and it's also an enzyme, right? Enzymes end in ASE, so synthase is synthesizing what? And you can see the, the reaction right here. These are your reactants. These are your reactants right here. And this is your product. Right? Reactants. Shrink that down so I can write on it. Reactants leading to product. So the energy of H plus is flowing through, flowing through, flowing through allows ADP to have another phosphate put on to make ATP, okay? So you have to remember your concentration gradients to get that portion of the light reactions correct, okay? Okay, uh, so remind me where we left off with our electrons prior to talking about ATP production. Where do we leave them? In photosystem one, and describe their energetic state. Not energized, low energy, because they were actively transported in H pluses in, so they can flow through ATP synthase to make ATP. So we have low energy electrons. 
We also have a built-in system to re-energize them. What is that system? Nick? Light. So photo system one, right here, acts as a recharge station. Light, once again, strikes the pigments, most likely chlorophyll, and re-energizes those electrons. So that if you follow the pathway here, as soon as we load them onto NADP+, they're high energy, and as soon as NADP+, gets electrons, what does its name change to? NADPH, okay? This is very high energy. This is very high energy. We're gonna use both of these for what purpose? Yep, so we're gonna send both of these to the Calvin cycle in the stroma, right? So all this space out here is for the Calvin cycle. There's a lot of moving parts there, but if you stop and think about how things are interacting to accomplish two goals, you should be able to get it. What are the two high energy products we must make in the light reactions? What do you think, Carissa? Good. Good. If we go back here, you should hopefully recall that the two high energy products we need to make from the light reactions are ATP and NADPH. Oof. Okay. Uh, what else is produced by the light reactions? Oxygen. We checked that off of our list. We now know how that's produced. What else has to go into the light reactions? H2O and light. So this half, you know, the light reactions over here, you should have explanations for all of that. Okay? You should be able to tell me about the cell transport involved in that process. Okay? Okay, um, the rest of today's class is for the following explanations. What are we doing with that carbon dioxide? What is its role in the Calvin cycle? And how specifically does the Calvin cycle make this sugar? Where is all this occurring? In the stroma outside the thylakoids. Based on this figure, you should be able to see, and definitely by the end of class today, you should be able to see that the Calvin cycle is using high energy ATP and high energy NADPH and spitting it out as low energy for it to be recharged in the light reactions, okay? But it's really all about what? What are we trying to make? Sugar, right? So we should be able to make this sugar right here, okay? And that's the second part, that's the Calvin cycle. I know it seems like I harass you for participation, but even getting these things wrong at this point in time is being better, it's better than being silent. Practicing it while you're not taking a test is like the essence of education, right? If you're afraid to get them wrong, you're gonna get them wrong, right? If you're not, if you're not gonna practice these things with me, chances are that test is not gonna work out the way that you want, okay? So you will have to be able to describe this situation, okay? So I will give you a break to clear your head, and we'll pick it up with the Calvin cycle. We have two important high energy molecules coming in from the light reactions that are gonna play a role in the Calvin cycle. Somebody remind me what those are. So those are the low energy ones. So here's the high energy, NADPH, and high energy ATP, okay? So we've charged them up. We've sent them to the Calvin cycle to do something. Their job's gonna be defined in a moment. It's very basic for you guys. Now, it's called the Calvin cycle. So Cal Calvin, uh, his first name was uh, Melvin. This is gonna 
increase in size for me. Here we go. Okay, this is zooming in. I didn't want that. Here, hang on a second. The uh